impossible with you. There is no battle too hard for you to win.
of you know that we have been given power. I said the other time that we are coming from the place of victory. Therefore, do not let the enemy deceive you, confuse, confuse you, or convince you that you are less than a victor. Let no let no trouble, no situation, no circumstances rob you of the fact that you are a victor. Because what greater is he that is in you? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say, who can stand against me? Who can stand Come on, come on, let's go. declare the lordship of Jesus Christ and we pray that the will of God be established tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Father we pray that our eyes of understanding be enlightened and you make us wise by the reason of your word in Jesus mighty name we are prayed church. How has been our week? How has been our week? I trust God that we are having testimonies already. I pray that we enjoy the fullness of God's provision for us this season in the mighty name of Jesus. So this evening we have a, a topic to deal with. 
which is armor of God. Armor of God. I believe there's no uh, other place in the scripture where we can find this than the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 19. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to verse 19. That's where we, we are going to be studying this evening. And it's going to be more like a verse by verse teaching, kind of. Okay? And probably there will be questions. I'll be asking us questions. And I will appreciate we, um, we have that introduction together. I thank God for Porter Scott. We give praise to God. Thank God for the pastorate. And I count this as a responsibility. And I pray that God will keep increasing the church in the mighty name of Jesus. I appreciate the pastor for this opportunity. So as I mentioned, we are going to start from verse 10. The armor of God. So what is an armor? An armor is basically, you know, in those days, they, they are things they put on during the war when there is battle. So they have these metallic plates of different types that they put on as soldiers. Besides, only soldiers wear armor, right? We don't wear armor for wedding. We wear armor to battle and it's only put on by soldiers trained soldiers and it is good to understand and to know that there is skill behind putting on of armor that is why in the book of first Samuel chapter 17 when David was to confront Goliath and Saul told him to put on his own armor Samuel, uh, so, uh, excuse me, David said he could not put it on because he has not put it on before. But you know that Goliath has been fighting battles right from his young age. So he was having armor on him. Saul also was a trained soldier. He was having armor on him. However, David could not put on the armor because, because he was not trained to put it on. So armor it's not something that we pick by the roadside or we pick anywhere we find it and we just put it on. It, there are skills required for putting on armor. Praise the Lord. So, in verse 10, the Bible says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, is a word when you write an essay or when you are writing a piece and you write finally. That means you are coming to the end of what you were talking about. And the word finally indicates that there were things that were being discussed before. And if we study chapter 5 of Ephesians and the beginning of chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 9, we discover that he's talking about relationships. He's talking about husband loving your wife. He's talking about wives submitting to your husband. He's talking about children. He's talking about how master should relate with the slave, how slave should relate to the master. He's talking about so many things. He's talking about relationships. So at the end of everything, he said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So, that means strength. Strength is not negotiable. Strength is not negotiable. 
in the face of challenges that will come as a result of relationships. Now, this night, I, I just wanted to understand that the battles we fight are not necessarily what we think is the battle. Because I know sometimes when we listen to news and you hear two nations at war, we take side with one and we desire that that country wins and the other should lose. But the truth is, we might not really understand what caused the fight between the two nations. We just took our emotional sides. But the truth is, the, is that most battles we are going to face in life are product of relationships. Most battles we are going to fight are product of relationships. With people, our relationship with God, our relationship with our bosses, our relationship with so many people. So it requires strength to withstand and to stand in the day of battles. Hallelujah. So, when we, when we, when we study the scriptures, we look at Exodus chapter 20 and we see the Ten Commandments. The first three talks about relationship with God. Thou shalt not have another God beside me. Right? He's talking about you should not bow to them. He's talking about the day of Sabbath. Do you, re, do you notice that after then, everything he was talking about is your relationship with other people? That shall not steal. That shall not covet. That shall not commit adultery. It's our relationship with people. He's talking about children to honor their parents that they might live long. It's about relationship. So, the our quality of Christianity is tested in our relationship with people. Two, it takes strength to carry the armor of God. So we're going to have an illustration of a man that is going to put on a physical armor. As we mentioned earlier, that the armor is made up of metals. Not feathers, metals. And metals have weight. They are plates of metals that are connected together in a certain way that it can deflect arrows, that it can withstand the penetration of arrows and different kinds of uh, darts of the enemy. But not for sure that that, that armor is going to be heavy. That's why devil could not carry Saul's armor. It's heavy. Then you need strength. So can you imagine a man that is putting on armor, but he's weak? What happens to him? The armor is going to weigh him down. That's what I said. It takes certain skills to put on the armor of God. And what the devil does is this. The devil finds out our area of weaknesses that will make the armor heavy for us and weary us down. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he explores those areas. We'll, we'll see some of those areas later on. So it takes strength. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul prayed a prayer. From verse 16, he said, For this cause I bow my knee unto God, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Why? Because for you to carry the armor of God, you have to be strong. And the strength required to carry the armor of God has to come from God himself. Because the arm of flesh, by arm of flesh, we cannot prevail. 
You cannot carry the armor of God by your own strength. I cannot. So I need to be strengthened by God so that I can carry the armor of God. I, I don't know if you remember the story of David when he was at the battle and the enemy almost killed him. If not for the help of his colleagues, they would have killed him that day. David had skills. David had experience. David was putting on armor, but David was weak at that point. We need strength. So he said in verse 10, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself, and in the power of his might. I pray for someone tonight that if there is any area of our lives that we are experiencing weakness, the strength of God is supplied unto you in the name of Jesus. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wile of the devil. That means the putting on of the whole armor of God is not a suggestion, is a command. Is a, is a, it's like the terms and condition for being a member of the army of God. Put it on. He didn't say you may put it on. He said put on the whole armor of God. It's not a suggestion. Number two, the putting on is not God's responsibility. It is our responsibility. Say it's my responsibility. He said, put it on. Put it on. So how do we carry out this responsibility? Have you ever had a situation where someone is sick? And you're like, what's wrong with you? They said, I don't know. The next thing you said is, you better go and check yourself. Have you heard that statement before? Have you heard that statement before? Go and check yourself. Oh. Now, the question is, is he the one that will check himself? Answer me now. Is he the one that will check himself and say, ah, no, I know, okay, ah, is this headache, is, is typhoid, or is malaria, or is this? Is he the one that will check himself? He's not the one. But why did you tell him to go and check himself? It is his responsibility to do what? To go and do the checkup. So when the scripture is telling us to put on the whole armor of God, it is our responsibility to put up. But how do we put it on? Because if we do not know how to put it on, we will put the breastplate at the back. Hmm? We will use this word. And tie it on our arms. You know, our arm is long and this word is, uh, is long too. We will mismanage resources. So, in Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, he said that the communication of your faith might be effectual by the acknowledging of every good works that is in you in Christ. So, throughout this, uh, this session, one thing I want us to understand is that the armor of God only functions with in our relationship with God. That you put on the old armor of God does not make you become independent of God. Hey, ask the prodigal son. Prodigal son had everything the father, he, he had his portion from the father's provision. But he did not know that he could not sustain it without the father. Okay, so by acknowledgement of every good works, the armors were not designed by us. That's why it's called the armor of God. So it's not designed by us, it's designed by him. So we need to acknowledge the good works, the provisions in Christianity. You know, some of us, I keep saying these things. Why? Because God challenged me one time. 
Ah, okay, something happened. Something happened. And I was praying about it. And I had my prayer points about it. About six or seven prayer points. God answered everything. Say everything. God answered everything. Then something happened afterwards. Then I was asking that God, why did this thing happen? You know what he told me? He said, I did what you told me. But you didn't wait to listen to what I wanted you to ask. Uh, did you get my question, my statement? He said, I did everything that you prayed to me for. But you know that your request is not complete. But you didn't wait to hear the concluding part of that prayer. Hello. Ah, say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so what's the concluding part of the prayer? <laughs> then you told me the concluding part of the prayer. But do you know that what happened, I'm the one that suffered, is not God. So why am I saying that? That the armor of God does not function fully without our cooperation with God himself. So there is nothing about the armor of God that we can be proud of in ourselves. Because you know what Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 5? He said, because without me, you can do nothing. You can see. You can be a, a you can be you can have the scripture from Genesis to Revelation in your head. You can pray and fire comes out of your mouth. Jesus said, see, if you disconnect from me, you can do nothing. You can be doing some things, oh. But everything you do is equal to nothing. So, carrying the armor of God without God himself is like a man setting himself up for defeat. Please, let us first of all settle that from the beginning. Samson carried the anointing of God. But at the point he disconnected from God, what happened to him? He had issues. Okay? Number three. We are still in verse 11, right? Do you remember? He said, the, we should carry what? The whole armor of God. So, if you are jotting down, I will appreciate if you can write the word whole, W-H-O-L-E, and underline it. So that means a man can carry the partial armor of God. A man can say, I'm born again. I evangelize. And I pray. So what are you now talking about? But he's not carrying the whole armor of God. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 9 told us so many things we need to add to our lives. And in verse 8 to 9, it says, For if these things be in you, and they are bound, they shall make you that ye shall neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he that lacketh this thing is blind, cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was pushed from his old sin. That means, the armor of God we put on must be complete. Number one, we cannot carry the armor of God without God. We cannot function in the armor of God without God himself. And the next thing is that the armor we put on must be complete. The Bible talks about the whole armor. Why? He says so that you might be able to stand the wiles of the enemy. 
So that is the purpose of the armor. The armor is not for fashion. In fact, the armor is not uniform. The armor is not uniform. If you know any military man, whenever he's at home with his family, do you know he doesn't put on his armor? True of us. But anytime he's going to the to the battle, what does he do? It's not for fashion. When a man puts on the armor, it's a sign that that man is ready for battle. Verse 12 says, Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. I would like us to stop here a little. You know, sometimes I watch action movies and there is something I see that is common whenever there is warfare the enemy doesn't always come to confront but sometimes especially when they have tried 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 and they could not penetrate the camp they begin to use the principle of distraction. Have you noticed it in uh, action movies before? Right? You notice somebody, for example, they are chasing one another. They have an object in between them. And the guy stays here and he takes an object and he throws it far away from where he is. So that when his opponent hears a sound, what does the enemy do? The opponent turns to that place where there's a sand, but is it there? So when the enemy turns to that side, he has the opportunity to be at the back of the enemy and shoot the enemy. How did they win that battle? Did they win it by confrontation or by destruction? Okay. You see, I know you know the scripture so well. I know we know a lot of things that God doesn't want us to do and things that God wants us to do. But the reason why a close work with God, as we are talking about the arm of God, right, is indispensable, is because there's what we call the strategies of the enemy. There's what we call strategy. And do you know that strategy is much more powerful than weapons? myself a question the bible talks about the men of valor that worked with david there was one of them who had a rod in his hand and he faced a giant with sword the bible says he collected the sword from his hand and he killed the giant and i was imagining between the rod and the sword which one is much which one is more powerful but there should be something behind the skill of having a rod that makes a man with the rod to kill a man with sword. Have you not seen it in movies? That a man that has no weapon will kill a man with his gun. And you know something that surprises me is, no matter how loaded a gun is, when the carrier is dead, it's useless. I see a powerful man carrying a gun that when he shoots it once, it can destroy the whole of a house and everything. And somebody from the back will just come and use a stick and hit him on his head. Bam! And the guy will fall on the floor and he will die. I was like, so where is now the power of that weapon? So now let us come back to how it applies to us. Basically, the scripture is telling us that our enemies are not the flesh and the blood. Your wife is not your enemy. It's not your children. It's not your husband. It's not your boss. It's not your neighbor. It's not that woman and that man, you think. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principal. Now, when I begin to talk about principalities and powers and, you know, 
we, we look at them sometimes I didn't say they are not you know, they are, you know those principalities and those powers and those you know we look at them that way but however the enemy doesn't always come to us in that way it comes to us subtly just like the way it came to Jesus and he told Jesus can you please turn the bread to, can you turn this stone to bread do you not, is that any principality does it sound like any principality or power does it sound like wickedness in the high places just to Jesus you know you can just turn this bread this stone to bread oh. But let me ask you a question. If Jesus had turned the stone to bread, did Jesus have the power to turn stone to bread? Did he, did he have the right to do it? Was it a sin to do it in itself? No. Right, because we see him multiply bread now, so it's not about bread. But if Jesus had turned stone to bread at that point in time, what do you think would have happened? The prince of this world would have won the battle do you get what i'm saying so the same thing happens to us let's let's check it can we have second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6 in message translation second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6 says this word is unprincipled it's dog eat dog out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. This word. He said the world doesn't fight fear. But we don't live or fight our battle that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. Can we, do we have it? Oh, thank you. So we can read together. And manipulation. But they are for demolishing that, that entire massively corrupt culture. What is he talking about? A culture. You know when, when, when Joseph says something like, No, I cannot do this thing and sin against God. You don't understand that at that point in time, Joseph was fighting against principalities and powers, not against Potiphar's wife. He didn't get. Joseph was not fighting Potiphar's wife. He was fighting against principalities, against power, against the ruler of darkness. Of this world and spiritual wickedness in you see they said somebody takes somebody's glory and use it for something else do you know that that day they have taken they would have taken joseph's glory do you know that potiphar's wife was not looking for his glory potiphar's wife was just looking for a pleasure it was a tool she was a tool in the hand of the prince of this world are you getting what i'm talking about so the things we are fighting the, the, the people we are fighting, the, the, the system we are, he's talking about the corrupt, it's a system. And he says, <laughs> we use our powerful God tools for smashing the warped philosophies. Can you notice that? Philosophies. Tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God. Fitting every loose thought an emotion, an impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. So what we are really fighting against is those things that are working against the existence of Christ and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what we are fighting against. And he said, our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience unto maturity. This is the purpose of putting on the weapons of our warfare. This is it. It's not to kill that enemy. Yes, you he may die along the line. You know, along the line, your enemy may die. 
But do you know many times that our enemy die, but we, we are still a slave to a system? Oh. Because the Israelites left Egypt and they praised God. But do you know that they were a slave to a particular system? And that system made sure that they didn't enter the promised land. That is what we are fighting against. Let me give you an example. Do you remember in 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 1 to 4? The Bible says, <laughs> And again the anger of the Lord came to against Israel. And he moved David to do what? To do what? He moved David to Kant. It's, it's an innocent decision. They're not just to count it. I just want to know. If you read up to verse 4, Joab was trying to tell David, don't do this. Don't do this. You know, the scripture said, notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab. It's not just the king's word that prevailed against Joab. It is a principality that is a word that prevailed in that conversation. And when he did it, what happened to the, to the people of Israel? They began to die. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Do you remember in Matthew chapter 16, verse 22 to 23? When Peter took Jesus and he began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, you will not die, you will not die. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Why was Jesus mentioning the name of Satan? Whereas Satan was not among the disciples because if you don't know what we are worrying about against we'll be fighting the wrong battle and let me tell you something sir you see the devil doesn't really care if you pray if you like pray 24 hours he doesn't care if you study the scripture very well he just cares that you lose focus of the right thing it's, it's okay for him as long as you lose focus of the right on of the right thing, it's okay. He knows that it only takes time. You will you will self-destruct. Do you hear what I said? So Jesus said, Get it behind me, Satan. Jesus was not talking to Peter. You see, let's let's check one more. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16, he said this. He said, honor thy father and your mother. You know, he's talking to children. As the Lord thy God has commanded thee, that thy day might be prolonged, and that it might go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, let me show you when you are about to fight principality and power. Do you know that children of nowadays, this honoring of parents, is their way of life true of us they 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 find it like why why should you speak and i cannot speak i have right to speak and do anything i want to do they talk against the elderly people and people in authority on social media they say words that are not worthy to be repeated they are fighting a principality many of them have sold their future already on social media. The devil saw it. See, all your tweets, the devil saw it too. And God saw it too. And your post on, on status. Be careful. Be watchful. Because he said, do you want to live long? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you see principality and power here or do you see it? So when you are praying against uh, what do you call it? Not living long. The devil wait for you. They put a post on social media and they said, those men of God self, they are da, 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 da. You two, you went there. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. And you join that conversation. The devil takes it. It is you the devil wants to get. It's not them. Because them, they are already in his, in his, uh, what do you call it? In his jail. It is you the devil is watching over. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. So why do we put it on? We put it on so that we can withstand the days of evil. The days of evil are coming and they are here. 
So offense, we talked about offense. Uh, you, you remember when John the Baptist was asking, he sent people to go and meet Jesus. After he heard what Jesus was saying, he said, Jesus, are you, are you the one or I should be expecting another one? That is an offense. Jesus said, go and tell him. The lame world, the blind see, and this happened and that happened. Ah, Jesus said, and blessed, that's Matthew chapter 11, and blessed is he, whosoever sh that shall not be offended in me. Offense. So when my wife offends me, the devil is about to set me up. You don't know. See, see couples, we take misunderstanding casually. We take it casually. And we say, it is you. This, oh, this house would have been good. It is you. It is you. It is you too. Then we set you up. Offense. And the scriptures in verse 12, 11, 12, it say, from the day of baptism, the kingdom, Jesus began to talk about John. He now said, ah, from this day of baptism, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence will take it by force. See, it's only men of war that are violent. Men of war. So we fight not against flesh and blood. Don't forget, principalities, the powers, and those things manifest themselves in our day-to-day -day activities. So what are the contents of our armor? Verse 14 now. Are we going with me? Are we learning something? So the content is... It says, stand there for having your loins guard about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. So the truth, we know there's nothing called the truth. There's no one that is called the truth except who? Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's not, I'm not a way. I'm not a truth. I'm not, you know, nowadays, everybody translates the scripture. The way they feel it should be translated. Uh, uh, my opinion doesn't count when it comes to the scriptures. My opinion doesn't count. The truth counts. And that truth should be that which we use to guard our... See... Let me talk about family a little. Something happened not long ago. My wife, did, I will tell you, sorry, my wife. Eh? My wife did something to me. And I made up my mind. I said, she did this, right? Anyway, this is what I will do because I don't want to say something I should not say. I said, that area, I will abandon that area. Do you, you know we do it in marriage? When it comes to that area, I will abandon it. And I abandoned it. And the Holy Spirit told me and said, Oh, <laughs> you abandoned that area? I said, Yes, of course, because I don't want to say things I'm not supposed to say. I don't want to do things I'm not supposed to do. I want peace. Do you hear this statement we used to say? I want peace to reign. And the Holy Spirit showed me, he said, do you know that what the devil wants you to do originally that made that thing happen is for you to abandon that area? And he began to show me the, the value in those areas. See, he wants you to abandon this area because of this and because of this and because of this. I was like, ah, Holy Spirit, don't let us go that side. He said, no problem. If you are ready to abandon those things, those treasures in those places, no, abandon that area. You see, I wanted to fight the battle using my own method. Are you getting what I'm saying? Truth. Truth. <laughs> but you know those things he told me not to abandon. It will affect me because me, I need to change first. <laughs> I don't know why the Holy Spirit will be telling me to change first. Why didn't he go and tell my wife to change first? Has the Holy Spirit done that to you? before ah, ah please let him begin to do that thing to you they begin to tell you you're having issues with somebody and instead for the holy spirit to go and knock that person on the head and say you are wrong the holy spirit will come to you and say your level of wisdom you see is not 
up to where I want it to be. Uh, there's something I want to teach you. Come. You see, you made error here. You made error here. If you can fix this and fix this, you will go this way. Uh, but it's not palatable, bro. But do you want the truth? If you don't want the truth, if you don't want to put that armor of truth, you will kick the Holy Spirit aside, though. And you will tell your parents, marry her for me because I love her so much. Like Samson. Hallelujah. You want the truth? Eh, that's your belt. Then we have the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness. Psalm 15 verse 1 to 2. He said, Lord, who shall abide in the tabernacle? Who shall dwell in the holy hill? He that walks uprightly and walketh righteousness. Righteousness is not just in your heart. Righteousness is a nature of God imparted upon our spirit that makes us produce the, the fruit of righteousness. Don't tell me you are righteousness inside and it doesn't show outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is our breastplate. Breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15 says, And our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So my chest is covered. My waist is covered. Right? The next one is my feet. Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings, good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. The gospel of peace is not only to, believe, to unbelievers, it's to believers also. When a believer is hurting, what, what news do you bring to that believer? Do you do like Job's friend and say, eh, what happened to you? You are sick. I know. You know last week when you were going like this, you were going like this. The way I was looking at you, I know you will get into trouble. Or you tell him and say, bro, don't worry. God is on our side. Can we hold hands together and pray together? Ah. Uh, you see, there's, a, there's one of the people in the, in the scriptures, I can't remember his name. Anytime they want to pass, in the time of David, anytime they want to pass good news, they will send this man. So there was a time during the fight between Absalom and uh, David, and they saw somebody coming. They said, who is coming? They said, ah, uh, it looks like, they mentioned the guy's name, I can't remember now. They said, mm, if it's that guy, then it should be a good news. But if it is this other, he said, but another guy has, overcome, has overtaken him. I said, ah, it means uh, the news is not too good. When men see you, do they become lighter or their spirit become heavier? But when you do that, that you bring the, the good news unto others, you are not bringing good news to them. You are putting on the armor of God. You are putting your feet in the right shape. And you are ready for battle because a day is coming. You will need that shoe. You will need somebody that will bring good news to you that will look like water in the desert. But because you've always killed other soldiers, you will not see help in your time. May that not happen to you in Jesus' name. Now he said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. So when darts are coming, now what is faith? Faith is the evidence. I know we all know that. So let's talk now. What is faith? I'm not hearing us now. We are Bible scholars. So what is faith? Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is not seen. Verse 2. 
the elders receive a good report. Faith. So let's do this tonight. I want to give us an assignment if we can do it, okay? I want you to read through the book of Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to the end and you take if you can make a tabular form or you can start like this the first person mentioned in he said by faith we know that the word was created by the word of God right and can we have it displayed okay verse 3 says through faith we understand that the word were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are made of things which which were seen were not made of the things which do appear. Verse 4. By faith, Abel. Now, the, this is what uh, the assignment I want to give us. Is it okay by us? So by faith, you go, you write Abel. You underline. You now write everything that Abel used his faith to achieve. For example, so let's do the first one. By faith, you say Abel, number one, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Right? Then, under it, the next line, you write effect. That's what he did, right? The effect is that he obtained, but we obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. So, you write everything that everybody in this book of Hebrew chapter 11 from verse 1 to the end did. And you go through them, go through them again and again and again like four times. You will understand what faith is about. But let me just give you this hint. That I noticed that everybody in Hebrew chapter 11... They did not use their faith to receive anything from God. Rather, their faith was used to please God. Do you not see it now? He said, by faith, Abel, he, you by faith, you want to receive, Abby? By faith, he, he offered more excellent sacrifice than Cain, and by which he obtained a witness. So he receives a, an approval from, it's like you submit your document to the embassy and you receive a reply that says approved. So you receive an approval that he was righteous and God testify of his gift that in a way that even though when he was dead, he's still speaking. Do you want your faith to get to this level? Because if the way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy the flesh and blood. Do you remember the flesh and blood? He makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. No. That's why Jesus did not answer John the Baptist the way John the Baptist wanted Jesus to answer him. Jesus was saying, Today, you would have received the report that John <laughs> pleases God. I mean, let's just, okay, I'm just paraphrasing, right? Pleases God and his, and, his, and his declaration. You know, in the book of Hebrew, it talks about people that they saw it afar off, but their hand did not touch it. He said, but they declare that we are not of this place. We belong to that place. And those people also, if you read, just go and read it, you will see that also they also receive a report. So faith is what is needed to receive a report card from God. So it is that faith that scripture is talking about here in, in chapter 6 of Ephesians. Because you can use your faith to collect things from God without pleasing God. You know I don't need to like you to give you something. You don't know. You can put me under pressure 
and Yoruba will say, Moti Jue. And I can be, I can just, your problem is too much. And I will do what? I will give you. But if you please me, do you know that what you are not thinking about, I'll be thinking about you. Do you know that your prayer, each time you will make a request, I will be swift to answer you. Much more is God. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Are we, am I communicating? Okay. So God desires that our faith should be an avenue to please him. That is the faith that we put on the weapons. And it tells you that we needed for this armor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh. Because, you know, verse 6 says, because in verse 6 of Hebrew chapter 11, he said, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to him must first of all believe that he is. See, that word he is means, you know, when God, when God was having a conversation with Moses and said, what name do I tell the people? What did he say? I am. So that's what's talking about he is. That means he, he is because in him started everything and in him everything ends. There's nothing outside his cycle. He is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, you know, I was discussing with my wife yesterday. We we're just talking about something and I say, it baffles me how much God did wonders. Ten times in the land of Egypt for the, for the Israelites. Ten times. And God said, my, my mighty hand, I took you out of this place. And I took you, I'm taking you to Canaan and this and that. And in the wilderness, God said, you still deny me ten times. So that means it's not enough that there's no amount of miracle God can do to a man that can make that man to change his mind. So if a man is, is, paying, is, is, is having his tent in a place that says, ah, yesterday I asked for money, God gave me money. That means my ways, you know, ah, me and God. Anytime I pray like this, he answer. No, 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 no. How you will know that you are working in faith is because your way pleases the Lord. And with that, you will get a confirmation letter from him. <laughs> he said because Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. You must get a report card from God. The Bible says it makes rain to fall on everybody, even unbelievers and, and believers equally. Have you not seen videos of people that are narrowly, narrowly, and they, they narrowly escape death and they don't know God? But there's something more for you. You're you are a child of God, I believe. If you're a child of God, there's more for you. There's more for you. You can be going to the market and dash somebody 500 naira, 5,000 naira, whatever, no matter how much is in your pocket. But it's different for your children. It's different. You are God's child. Above all. So that means above all. <laughs> Say above all. Above all. Is faith. So, but that faith, that faith is not for bread and butter. Verse 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. He said in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17, he said, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on garment of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal of as a cloak so helmet of salvation that's what shields our head now it talks about the word of god which in hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 says uh, verse 12 says for the word of god is quick is powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the div dividing a standard of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is designer of the thought and the intents of earth. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. But all things are naked and open in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. See, if you take your time to study the word of God. 
you would, you would be discovering God's heart, God's principles, God's way of living. You will, you will, you will discover the sneers of the fowler in the scriptures. You will discover the, 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 the plans. You just be reading the book of Daniel, for example. You just read the book of Daniel and you just reading, you know, you just studying and reading. And you see, let me, let me advise you when you're reading the scripture, ask questions. Ask questions. You know, one of the questions I asked myself was that now we have this, uh, we, we have this armor of God and we have the breastplate, we have the, the we have this, uh, this one on our loins, right? We have the shoe on our feet, we have the helmet of salvation. But why do we still need, why do we need the shield? Why do we need it? Because it, to me, it looks like the shield gives us a double. We have one. Do we use shield at the back? Where do we use the shield? In front. So I'm asking, maybe you know, I'm still asking. I'm asking the Holy Spirit, why do we have, why do we need to have double protection again? Since we have, hmm? I know it will tell me. Right? Ask question when you are studying the scripture. Oh, hey, Holy Spirit, why, why did David not do this? Why did he do this one? Why did you ask him this? And please listen to the truth, though, because when God will explain to you, we will not explain to you just the scripture. He will explain your life to you. Right? So the word of God is quick, it's powerful. So when you study the word of God, you are setting yourself up, getting ready for the days when the arrows will come. Because arrow, as I told you, might not come like you sleep in the night and somebody shoots arrow to you. We all know that. And it happens. But what about the arrow of thought that comes to your mind? Arrow of depression. Arrow of, are you sure I will make it? Arrow of, are you sure somebody will marry me? Are you sure I'm fine? It's an arrow. So what scripture do you have ready? Because you do not prepare ammo in the day of battle. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, praying always with others, verse, verse 18. Praying always with no prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching their own with up perseverance and supplication for all saints is part of the armor. Because when you check the book of Joel chapter 2 and you see the army of God that is going to operate at this end time, they are here already. They are not coming, they are here. They are here. That army. The Bible talk about ranks. Eh? <laughs> so, they will have ranks. And each rank is going to be performing different operations. They will begin to be doing different things. You will see them in sports. You will see them in, in academics. You will see them in education. You will see them in governance. You will see them in art. You will see them in different areas. I mean, like you see uh, Daniel in, in, in politics, and you will see they are here already. They are not coming. Let me tell you something. What you look for is what you will see. Oh. You, you on social media, you just see that Nigeria is not working. Abi, is what you are looking for. You will see it. There's an army and they are here already. Do you notice that every program around now is fire, 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 fire? Does it occur to you? Do you know why? Go and find out. It's fire, fire. You see fire here, fire. And some people are abusing that fire. They just they, they thought the fire is that it will burn my enemy and roast my enemy. And uh, it's more than that. There's more to it. There's fire of purification that's happening right now. There's purification that's going on because the army is here. So what you do is when you put on your army, you watch out for your colleagues. You watch out for your for your for your neighboring soldier. You, the Bible says two are better than one, but because they have good reward for their labor. Because if if what if they fall, if they fall, one will carry, one will lift up the other. If they fall, not if one fall. They, no, if they fall, we have the capacity to lift ourselves up. Have you not seen it word in, in action movies? We are getting we are getting into Christianity of selfishness. Get out of it. Is going to put a, a hole in your armor. Pray for fellow believers. Pray for ministers of God. Pray for the church. Pray and pray and pray for people. Not only you. You are not the only one here. Pray, pray, pray for people. Pray. Oh. I know we understand that language. What did I say you should do? 
pray, oh. But oh, don't leave pay for yourself. Got my house, my key, my this, my dad, my car, my 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 my. The scripture is telling about the supplication for the saints. And I see the Lord helping us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, in summary, we have seen that the hammer of God is not of man. The source is God. There is strategy in putting on the armor and the strategy is much more important. You know, David was saying, it teaches my hand to... There are weapons of destructions and weapons of distractions. I hope we know. And the hammer of God cannot function outside the God of the armor. Therefore, we know that I look alike armors. Hmm? Look alike. I can make a armor with paper now. You will like it. But we, the test, if it is true armor, is in the day of battle. I pray that in the day when we will be tested, we will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Uh, please, do we have questions, contributions? Do we understand something? Does anybody learn something this night? So, do we have questions? Or contributions? The armor of God. we have oh, okay so yeah praise the lord i want to say thank you very much sir for this wonderful teaching um while you were teaching you made you made mention of um the issue where you have with your wife and now the Holy Spirit dealt with you. Uh, I just want to relate similar thing happened over the weekend between myself and my wife. And at a point, I was angry. And I put off the phone. And while I put off the phone, the Holy Spirit told me you are a fool. For three days, and this particular night, you want to allow anger and just a mere misunderstanding to cause you a lot and I had to call my wife back and we spoke and while we were speaking she was still a little bit but I was just patient until we were able to resolve the whole issue and I found peace you know it's important that we understand that the just like you said the principalities they are not what we see in uh, Nollywood what we see in movies they are just minute things that the devil, the enemy, is using to get at us. It may be anger, it may be doubt, just some two things. And it will make sure he use those that are closest to you to cause you to fall so that he can take advantage. I want to say thank you, sir, for, uh, for that. God bless you, sir. Praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. Please, I thank God for the teaching. I think it's, uh, it's timely. The teaching is timely that um, we need to wake up and put on the whole armor of God. But many times, when you put on the armor, is it possible to put on the whole armor of God and you are not aware that the whole armor of God is on? Or is it possible for you, you are not carrying it, or you, are not, you did not know that you did not carry it? Is it possible? That's a question to the answer. This Bible study, right? This, the, to the house, who, who is going to help us? We have pastors in the house, we have teachers of the world in the house. We have Bible scholars. Is it possible that you are carrying the hammer and you are not aware? 
Or is it possible that you think you are carrying the armor, but you are not really carrying the armor? Thank you, sir. You can carry the armor. When you carry the armor, carrying of armor, armor is intentional. You can't see a soldier going to a battle and left his armor. He left his armor in the, in the armory and come to the battle thinking he went with his armor. So that's not possible. So when you are carrying armor, you will know you are carrying armor. But it is possible for you to think you are carrying armor. And yet, nothing is on you. It's possible. Is it clear, sir? Do we have somebody that wants to say something? Okay. Yeah, just to add to what is said, you made mention of the content of the armor righteousness uh, faith salvation the word of god truth so if you have those things in you you're operating with those things you know you carry the armor but where one of them is missing just one is missing if faith is missing how do you not please god what are you carrying your armor is incomplete praise the lord so okay Pastor. Okay, so if um actually when I know I need retreat, maybe pride is setting in. I know I need retreat, so I know that that armor I need to carry it. If I see that I'm, I can't pray like before, I know that okay, my armor is you know. So that is how I think I'll know that I'm not wearing a particular armor at the time, or my faith is down. Praise the Lord. That, that means you can know when there's leakage. So we can have leakage. Like the breastplates. You know, there are plates like this. Maybe one of them is shifted one side. I remember that kink that somebody just shoots an arrow without plant. He just shoots an arrow. And the arrow entered the gap, the tiny gap between two plates. And the man died. You know that man? Yeah. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, just to um, to add to what my uh, my people have said. Now, this I'm coming from this angle. The Bible says that in First Second Corinthians chapter five seventeen, it said, "If any man be in Christ," underline that word. Another scripture says that now we have put on Christ. Now, when you put on Christ, you have the armor of God revealed on you in your spirit man now what it does is this he said in christ you have the element of salvation it explains that you are protected as a saved one he said you have the breastplate of righteousness it explains that you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus number three he says the the shield of faith which explains further your belief system because that is what your faith is a faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god jesus was speaking to mary at the tomb of lazarus he said if you believe which is the same word as if you have faith you will see the glory of god and then he talks about the uh, the loins of truth which means that in christ we have the word of god to guide us to guide uh, anyway don't let me go into that to guide to protect us, to hold us tight, even in this way. And then we have the fruit of the gospel, uh, of course, which explains that even as we are saved, even as we are saved, we are the righteousness of God in uh, righteousness of God in Christ. Even as we have our belief system accurately um, as our defense shield, we have the loins of truth. So, what that scripture is saying that also sharing with other people. That's what he's saying. So it's very possible. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to be consciously aware that you are born again. And because you are born again, you have Christ living inside of you. If you believe that Christ...
Christ abides in you, the armor of God is upon your life. I don't know if I'm making sense. Do you understand? None of the armors, you didn't buy them. In fact, you cannot work for it. <laughs> you, do you understand, sir? You can't work, you can't buy it. You can't work for it and now I earn it. No. It is the finished work of Christ that we acknowledge. You remember Philemon 1 6. The acknowledgement of those good things that are in Christ, not in ourselves, that make us eligible. And Roman, when you go to join the army, they give you all this armor. You don't buy it, right? But you put it on. Acknowledge that if you see a soldier man, he's carrying gun. The man is telling you, be careful. I will deal with you. You better be careful. Because he knows what he carries. But if he doesn't know what he carries, and let him go. Okay? Do you understand, sir? Yes. Okay. I, I wanted said, to I wanted to mention something about what you said. About the shield of faith. Why do we need double protection? Um, something came to my mind. If it is the shield of faith that explains that I mean, sorry, if it is the, the breastplate of righteousness that explains that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't forget that your belief system is what God used to protect your righteousness in Christ. Once your belief system is attacked, your righteousness of, in Christ, your standing, your right standing with God becomes also attacked. So what God does is to establish a strong faith system or belief system in order to protect you as his righteousness in Christ. Thank you. Shall we stand to our feet, please? Oh, sorry. Our, we are already... I'm very sorry, sir. Please, my... Can we please stand, stand to our feet? We have only one prayer to pray, and the prayer is that, Father, reveal my status of armor to me. Father, reveal the status of my armor. God's armor on me. Father, please reveal it to me and help me repair the broken walls in the name of Jesus. I will pray. Father, please reveal my status to me. In the name of Jesus and help me repair the broken wall in the name of Jesus in areas I might have lost the breastplate of righteousness in areas my breastplate might have been punctured in areas I might have lost the belt of truth or I know I have my feet guarded with the preparation of the gospel have even lost the element of salvation you can ask the Lord to repair the broken armor this night in the name of Jesus father please reveal my status to me and wherever I need amendments wherever I need a new armor please help me this evening in the name of Jesus it's only before you that I can be naked and not ashamed please evaluate my life for me in the name of Jesus and replace old armor that might have even worn out that I may have in the name of Jesus is my belt of truth as it broken is my belt outdated is my breastplate of righteousness is it punctured father please help me replace them tonight in the name of Jesus thank you blessed Lord in Jesus mighty name we are praying Let's say a word of prayer for our teacher tonight and ask that the Lord will help him to indeed be fully kitted as a believer from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet that no harm will be missing in the name of Jesus. 
And if the sword of the Spirit is already blunt in his hands, and the Almighty God will sharpen it for him in the name of Jesus. And when the enemy comes to attack, he will be fully ready in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Please let's prepare our offerings as we give to God this evening. I believe the usher must have given us an envelope. And if you are making transfer, I believe media will project the account details for us to transfer into the account. Hallelujah.
by 7.30 a.m. for the first service and second service by 9 a.m. So we had managed to invite someone to church. First service, 7.30. Second service starts with master class by 9 a.m. Number two, our youth expression service for this month is almost here. Who knows the theme for this month? don't know it. Elijah level. So next week, sorry, um, 21st of April, two Sundays from now, 21st April 2024, will be the youth expression service for this month with the theme Elijah level. So please mark the date. It's going to be an amazing, amazing service. Probably someone will win the recharge card this month. Nobody won it last month. <laughs> then three, Gist Corner is finally back. Is somebody happy? Hallelujah. Who knows the theme for, for the series that will be starting off this Sunday? Yeah, it's a breakfast, a breakfast series. A man of God traveled abroad. I think he was in Houston. And he approached a traffic light. The traffic light turned green. And as he was moving, he saw another car coming, and the traffic for that person was red. So he slammed the brakes, thinking he was in Nigeria. That ah, possibly that person is not going to obey the traffic light. So he slammed the brakes and almost caused an accident. Then he said that that is what you do in relationships. You punish your next for the sins of your ex. He was punishing Houston for the sins of Nigeria. Aha. So, it's going to be a breakfast series. Come and learn about love, outbreaks, healing, and the likes. Of course, it's going to be premiered this Sunday by 5 p.m. It will be live on YouTube, 5 p.m. this Sunday. So, please, even if you cannot make 5 p.m., maybe for Connect Center's sake and all that, it will be on YouTube. You can watch it anytime. But also, please, we need us to send in our questions. Of course, we don't need your names. It's going to be an anonymous thing. The bar, the QR code has been sent, and even the link also has been posted on the family page. Do well to click it and send in your questions. All questions, as much as we have the ability, will duly be attended to by God's grace. And may God make our relationships, our homes, heaven on earth in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let's stand to our feet as we give God praise for this evening's service. Can we say, Father, thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to bear the whole armor of God. It's a privilege. None of us wants the element of salvation for it's given to us as a gift. None of us really can tell the truth at all times. But you can have it as a belt, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We also have one to pray always, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Can we say, Father, thank you for the privilege to carry the old armor, the old armor of God. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the privilege for making provision. the enemy and prevail to you be all the glory and the praise in Jesus mighty name we are praying at this point I want us to really be vulnerable to God of course yes, you can't hide from God from all the types of the armor or the parts of the armor we have learned there may be some you may be very weak with you know it's your weakest point it could be truth it could be faith it could be that you don't even have any form of the word of God in you. So the sword of the spirit is very blunt. Can you center on that one and pray this moment and say, Father, I want the sword of the spirit to be very sharp in my life. If that's yours. If you tell lies by default, can you pray? And Father, please help me fasten the loins of truth in the name of Jesus. Is yours that of preaching the gospel? Father, please help me that my feet will be 
naked and I will guard my feet with the preparation of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, are you falling and rising in faith? Your breastplate is punctured. You don't believe in God anymore. Can you ask that the Lord will help? The breastplate of righteousness, your shield of faith. Father, help me with my shield of faith, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the element of salvation. I will be fully guarded in the name of Jesus, especially my feet, in the preparation of the gospel and the presence of righteousness. Even in these times, to the glory of your name. Thank you, bless the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Let's have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening. We hope you were truly blessed by today's service. Follow us on all our social media platforms as we share a defined content all week and for a real-time update about our events. Till we come your way again on Wednesday, remain blessed. God is God, building excellent minds. Thank you for listening. We hope you were truly blessed by today's service. Follow us on all our social media platforms as we share edifying content all week and for a real-time update about our events. Till we come your way again on Wednesday, remain blessed. God is God, building excellent minds. Thank you 